You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome back. This is a weird one, right? So, if you told me the woman who directed Wayne's World was doing another movie, you'd think I'd be first in line, and I frankly might well have been. Little Rascals is a weird property, because it's one, while I never watched, I watched Smart Brothers and Three Stooges and those kinds of things, but this is literally that for kids. Little kids recreating those bits, and then this is recreating those bits. So you have this kind of weird, not a movie movie. I don't know, you'll hear it. It's weird. Also, a weird cameo that, if you haven't seen in a while, I'll let that kind of surprise you. But at the moment, it's on Netflix, so maybe you can find it, but who knows. Thanks for all you've done so far. Thanks for those of you who voted in the survey. And for those of you who've been paying close attention to the Facebook group, a couple days ago, we put up a bonus episode. So I hope you enjoyed that. But also, we put up a survey about November. Yes, that's right. This year, we're going to do another series month. And with the series not yet decided, we're going to let you guys pick which movie series we cover. So please make sure to do that. And of course, we're going to file your picks for the, you know, movies you wish we had done in our back pocket for later. Thanks, guys. Do you wake up in the middle of the night with cold sweats thinking about professional wrestling? Have you ever done the Ric Flair strut thinking no one was watching, but they were? Woo! Have you ever been to watch 18 hours of The Ultimate Warrior only to want more? If the answer is yes, then do we have the cure for you. The, the, the Pro, Pro Wrestling, wrestling Roundtable. Round we talk about the past, present, and future of professional wrestling, brother. We review wrestling movies and even jump in a time machine to review past wrestling events. You can find us on iTunes and www.theprowrestlingroundtable.com. Also on Twitter at Podcast PWR. Also join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash ESO Pro. We, we bring, bring the squared, squared circle, circle to, to the, the round table. table. Hey, you. Yeah, you. What are you doing after you finish this great podcast you're listening to? Well, whatever it is, you're going to blow that off and listen to the IMDB Journey podcast instead, hosted by Daniel, that's me, and Dean, that's me. Join us on our journey as we tackle the IMDB Top 250 list, breaking down one movie a week, giving our own rankings as we go, as well as our incredibly intelligent and insightful thoughts too. (laughs) We also throw in a random quiz or movie battle every once in a while and have a punt on it. Because us Aussies, we love a good punt. (gasps) Daniel, this is a G-rated promo. You can't say that. I said punt, Dean. Punt. (sighs) You dickhead. So come join us on the journey by subscribing to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or any other podcast apps, and follow us on Twitter at IMDB Journey. And now back to your regular scheduled programming. Welcome to Happy Fender Childhood. This week we are chugging along with Precocious Kid Month, um, and I guess we saw the prequel to Wayne's World. We we this was a mm. Daniel pick, and we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Um, but we watched 1994's Little Rascals, uh, directed by Penelope Sir- uh, Spheris? Spheris. Spheris. Yeah, I think so. the, the woman who did direct Wayne's World. So and Decline of Western Civilization, which this movie also showcased. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, on panel we have... Christina. Hello, this is Daniel, and I frequently whip out my lizard in public. Um, so, as an introduction to this... Uh, I love the faces Christine is making right now after I made that joke. Where's the froggy? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello, this is Daniel, and I frequently whip out my lizard in public. I meant to look up if that was his real voice. Yeah, no, it's uh, E.G. Daly, who I think was on Rugrats as well. Yeah, and uh, this that poor kid, man. I, so I he had to just lip 
everything. Yeah, like, pretty much. Lip sync everything, not sync. What pretty much. Lip talk. Well, in the original, uh, so this is, for those of you who don't know, uh, we should just really quickly, this is a kids movie which, boldly, uh, you don't work with kids and dogs. This movie is only kids and dogs. <laughs> And, and random cameos, random cameos but, all over the place. But credit where credit's due, the only ca- adults are cameos. Yeah. I love it for that reason. I, I, I'm shocked. Like, as a director, that's got to be insane. Like, the, the montage at the end is literally her pleading for, for, for pity. Because, like, the main, the female lead is a character named Darla, played by Brittany Holmes. And... She only looks at the wrong places. We, she yeah, I looked up her age. She's only five. When she did this? Filming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So, this is insane. Yeah. I was counting how many lines she had in each scene because I'm like, well, a five-year-old might know how to read, but no. couldn't put that to memory very That was well. one of the things about this movie I didn't get is how old these kids are supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell if they were five because they were making jokes about how they can't read. But then they, you know, when the blur came out, they were talking about how they're the defending champions of the local stock car race for five years. So... Although they had a joke about that, because everything is a joke about that. But at one point, <laughs> at one point, they're having a He-Man wooden, Woman Haters Club meeting. And at the club, they say, this club has been around forever since the beginning of time, five years. Oh, yeah, that's how they <laughs> um, uh, describe the blur. <laughs> which is a great line. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, the He-Man Woman Haters Club, isn't that just an MRA forum on Reddit? Yes, it absolutely <laughs> is. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is based on the 1940s. Uh, it, it lasted yeah. from like the 1920s through the 1940s back it, in the day. It's called Our Gang. Um, oh, oh, back in the 90s, uh, AMC used to rerun these original shorts early in the morning, and it was apparently a big enough deal that The Simpsons made a joke about it. Yeah. I and used to watch them when I was a kid. I, I mean, I was aware of them. No, the I'm original kidding. ones. Yeah. <laughs> me too, me too. And um, this is like a. Like, the, the kids are in those. These are 10 to 20 minute sketches. Mm-hmm. And that's very clear that that's what this movie is. It's a mm-hmm. bunch of sketches that are barely held together. But okay. this is kind of all she did, right? Because she also adapted the Beverly Hillbillies. Yes, she did. And, of course, Wayne's World, which is also a TV show. Right? Or it's a, well, it's a it was based on TV show, yeah. Well, the thing about this is it was very weird how they handled it. Because it seemed with the script they had, there were only three ways that they could properly handle it. First, they could actually set it in the 1930s because all these kids are still pretending like they're kids in the 1930s. Second, they could do the Tim Burton thing where it's like some fantasy every time where, you know, kids are still excited about the stock car race and actually fish to pass the time. Third, and this is what I would have wanted them to do, they could have acknowledged that they were kids in the 90s. You know, they would have hang, hung out at an arcade or something. Well, I mean, the, the the thing that bothered me about this movie is we can get to is just let the kids be older. Like none of these yeah. kids can act. It no. was very much. I, I mean, so if for the people who haven't seen this movie or f- have forgotten, there is a love story. You know, Alfalfa and Darla, and <laughs> a lot of it's centered around that. And I I kept getting the impression like this is like a teenager like a yeah. uh, story. You know, but you have like it eight nine-year-olds instead in this well the whole point about the original shorts from what i remember is it was kids acting like they were adults which made the adult world look stupid right and that was just completely gone from this i mean it was just the kids the joke was on the kids i mean well the whole movie was on the kids the adults don't matter in a shocking way right yeah yeah (laughs) because like okay so there's not really a plot, but um, Christina, do you want to take the plot? I will take the plot. O- only because we'll get to Daniel next. Daniel, This is Daniel's movie. and th- th- This one he's not defending, but this was his selection, and we'll mm-hmm. get into why you selected this. But Christina, give us the plot. All right. I tend to be long-winded, so You're please fine. let me know. <laughs> uh, it's, You're out of time. No, I'm oh, kidding. Dang. <laughs> All right, so Alfalfa and Spanky are the two main characters for the most part, and then you have Darla. You said Spanky. Spanky. (laughs) Uh, Spanky is president of the He-Man Woman Haters Club, a group of boys who do not like girls, which, (laughs) yeah, they they swear it off. It's a pretty funny oath. Uh, They have a clubhouse and a junkyard, and Alfalfa is dating Darla secretly. And Darla was like, prove you love me by taking me to lunch in your clubhouse. 
and he does but the the boys overhear it and they sabotage his date the clubhouse catches on fire it all burns down and now they blame alfalfa for everything yeah (laughs) and he they have to raise money to to build their new clubhouse at the same time they have a stock car for the stock car race that they've kept for the past five years (laughs) and in the clubhouse and alfalfa is assigned to guard it long story sir it gets stolen they race the stock cars with a car they built from a washing machine and should i spoil it no we'll we'll, 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 we'll get to the end i mean (laughs) but yeah no that's that's good now the difference is between what she said and what what, how the movie plays out is that it's really a bunch of shorts like you can literally see at the end i almost wish there had been like like a chiron that came up and said like the boys prepare for the race because the way they ended the scene was just two people who are like three and a half trying to make a joke at each other and then they would cut to the next scene. I'm just I, like, just call a cut, man. It's I fine. was so disappointed that Buckwheat wasn't Eddie Murphy. I'm just going to put that out oh, there. Oh, from uh, SNL? Oh, yeah. That's funny. All right, so now, Daniel, this is Precocious Kid Bunce. You had to choose a Precocious Kid movie. Why did you think of this one? It's obvious this time around, I guess. Well, back when I was a kid, um, both my parents worked, so I would, uh, you know, after school, there'd be these, like, uh, after-school camps or whatever that they put us in, and this was like a movie that they dragged all the TVs out and the VCRs out, and it's like, okay, here's a movie. Shut up and behave. Uh-huh. So this was something that was frequently shown to me, and... Uh, I don't know. The Little Rascals, when this came out, were already a comedy institution. So it it just seemed to make sense from what I remembered about it. And there are some scenes that really do capture that 1930s uh, slapstick comedy that the shorts were known for. Norn for Norn. Jesus, Mike Norn. Norn for. <laughs> now, okay, so like we can get, we can wait get into the weeds a little bit on this. You hated rewatching this. Oh, this did not hold up whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so uh, we can go through it a little bit. Um, there were parts of this that I thought were kind of actually funny, uh, but like okay, so the, the cold open is them doing their meeting, like the dog going around. Petey is going around to try to collect them so they can have a oh, meeting. I did like the dog. The dog and the monkey. We showed oh, up. Um, what was the monkey's name again? Oh my god, it's something. The dog as... was Petey. Elmer. 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 Elmer, oh. Elmer as himself. <laughs> um, and there's two bullies. The, the the redheaded stepchild is Woim, I think, and then there's Butch. Oh well, then it's Scott Farkas if it's the redheaded stepchild. Yeah, it's 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 kind of just an old comedy in in a lot of ways. That's why it didn't work for me because it's like. Why am I watching this when you're doing the same jokes that the original shorts did? Yeah, that's kind of it. And it, and it's also the exact same jokes. Yeah. Right? Like, it. The, the, I haven't seen it all the way. But it's that's why this Farley Brothers movie where they did the Three Stooges is kind of interesting. Because it's actually not a Three Stooges movie that's been remade. It's just another Three Stooges movie with mm-hmm. different actors, which is something. I, I don't know if this is something. Well, I do admire the fact... On, the, on that note, I do admire how well the kids did with each of their characters because you're right, it is very hard to work with kids, and they did okay oh, for they what committed. they were given. Yeah. Um, so this is this is what they look like now. But <laughs> oh yeah, there was that Entertainment Weekly uh, photo shoot mm-hmm. where it's like it's the 20th anniversary of the Little Rascals. Here's what they look like now. <laughs> and that's really it's it's purely for the kids people who watch this movie there, there's no reason for this this was not a huge success it was a kind mm. of success 65 million worldwide oh wow a whole 65 million i know but i think that's been uh, it was a huge success in my house it was a huge success. <laughs> I, I i will admit i saw this a lot so yeah. I, <laughs> I, we had the vhs and we watched it pretty religiously <laughs> pretty religiously um is alfalfa your god no, it wasn't anything like that. I think uh, my mom was really strict, like, and we lived in a cul-de-sac at the time when this movie came out, and she was like, you cannot leave the circle. <laughs> like, you know, like, you have to stay. No. And to see these kids who were my age, like, just be able to wander to, a cl- to have a clubhouse and to wander wherever they wanted to and not 
like, you know, have their parents always on them all the time was like really awesome to me. I was well, like, this is such a great see, movie for that reason. That's the thing with me, though, is I grew up in a cul-de-sac, too. And uh, in the summers, both my parents were in in the office. So my brother and I would uh, frequently walk to the closest movie theater that was near our house. You were uh, a little rascal. Yeah, I little guess little so. Rascal. But But that's what made this seem just so weird to me because they didn't act like we did. Well, you, you were also probably older than this by the time they were walking to the thing at like four. I, <laughs> I, I will say to your point, Christina, I like the set design of this. Like the clubhouse looked like a little kid clubhouse. Yeah. Um, I think the one of the most effective scenes, um, at one point, Alfalfa is punished. He's... He, he's <laughs> He's he, the, the the actual punishment was execution, but they managed to stay that. To, <laughs> oh yeah, he, he's kicked out temporarily, put on probation for the He Man Woman, Woman Haters Club. His job is to spend the night and watch the go kart to make sure it's not taken. But the kids all show up to stay and like help him keep watch, and they have a sleepover, and that's transposed against the girls having a sleepover, mm-hmm. and the girls' room is all white and pink, and Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen are there, and so is Raymond Simone, uh, Raven Simone. Oh, and it looks like. I mean, I mean, it's the scene out of Greece, the uh, that's Sandra exactly Dean scene. That's what I said. <laughs> I mean, and you're right, and that's what it is. And well, the boys, this is also where the cameos show up. You mentioned Raven Simone, and then the Olsen twins are in that bit. So yeah, um, but the, the thing I thought that worked about the scene is that the boys are on the other hand, and they're having a dialogue between the two of them, like you said, like the scene in Greece. Mm-hmm. But the director's smart here. And that there's a thunderstorm going on. And so every time there's thunder, that's when the transition happens. Oh, yeah. So the kids react to the thunder, they mm-hmm. scream, and then it goes to the girls' room, to the boys' room, to the girls' room. And that's that that also screams to me like a vaudeville scene, because the kids, I think, were owned by Universal Studios when they made this in the 30s. Uh, and so now it's just kind of a silly thing, but it's 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 good. Well, speaking of the jokes, though, like 11 minutes in, they have a dick joke. And they, it's like, why are they doing that in a kid's movie? Be- I thoroughly it, enjoyed it as an well, adult, though, because I did not pick that up. Well, <laughs> it, the hair, the hair it's the hair bit yeah. with yeah. Alfalfa's uh, little cowlick, cowlick going up. Except so. they botched that scene because he went in for the kiss and his cowlick was already up. And, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't botching the scene, madam. Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, but I, I, I would guess that the guy who played Alfalfa is a little bit older because you're right. He mm. feels like a middle schooler and he, he kind of has to nail his lines. If he's not good, the movie doesn't work. He was the yeah. best part of this movie as far as the kid actors go. I don't know. I also kind of liked Spanky. Spanky. Spanky was pretty good. He was Spanky like an looked old like... Democrat Southern politician he did. from the 1930s. <laughs> and he had that sway like, to he, yeah. looked, <laughs> he looked like Silent Bob. A little bit, I guess. Yeah. Uh, baggy yeah. shorts, baggy t-shirt. I mean, it's 1994. I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that that's why I guess that worked for me because it's like, oh, that actually looked like a child in 1994. Yeah, Alfalfa. Welch's commercials. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Alf Alpha really is three and a half years older than the rest of these kids. So oh, there wow. you go. Oh, good. I mean, that makes a difference yeah. when you're that age. He also will star in two years in The Stupids. And he's on the soundtrack for Baby Driver? That's weird. He is? That's what it says. Oh, good lord. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think is he's that done some they... voice acting overall, right? Yeah, he has. Yeah. I mean, most of these kids never did anything. Again, other than the aforementioned Raven Simone showed up and uh, mm-hmm. Mary Kate and Ashley Ocean, who now own everything, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah. I well, don't. their sister's the only one who still acts, so... I mean, if you're a billionaire from acting as a child, you don't have to act ever again. Are no. they billionaires? They own those clothing lines, mm-hmm. they own those shirt, like, those video lines. Oh, but, good lord. Hey, man, that's better than some people. One of them <laughs> didn't die, I think. <laughs> Congratulations, I, I, Congratulations, you didn't die. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes all you can hope for. Um... So I mean, let's let's do the bits because like that's kind of what this movie is, right? Mm-hmm. After seeing Alfalfa sitting on a boat, so wooing his lady love, uh, they decide to have a date. And so the first real bit, the f- first set piece, is them trying to sabotage the date, which leads to it burning down the the the. the you are so beautiful to me. Oh, the voice cracking jokes kill me. <laughs> You're everything. Thing I hoped for, and she loved his voice. It, it made was her melt like a popsicle. It, it was, and I quote, <laughs> "It was, and I quote, 
beautiful. <laughs> These kids, man. I again, I can't imagine directing this scene with this. I would laugh so much. I, a, I would, but B. That girl, like, what did you say? She was four and a half, five and five a half, year, five, five years years. old, trying to do this. Like, yeah. I honestly, because, and at the end, during the cuts, like, during the, the outtakes, it's her always wanting to look at the camera. Yeah. Brittany, mm-hmm. stop looking at the camera. Brittany, Brittany, hey, Brittany, Brittany, stop looking at the camera. Look at, Alva, look, look at Bug. Look at Bug. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, whatever, <laughs> man. This poor girl. Um... And this is a woman who worked with, like, drug-addicted teenagers in the past. Yeah. But, okay, so the date is a... It's a very sweet scene. It's, like, grape soda, it's sandwiches, it's candlelit, there's flowers, and then a fire starts. Well, the whole thing is that uh, Spanky's got, like, a checklist of how to sabotage the date, so it's, like sandwiches where they replace the toppings with cat litter and uh oh geez what else was there Man, that was cat litter there, there was several that they didn't even get to like the hot foot yeah yeah the uh, hot foot which is a very 1930s joke yeah all, all of these are very like old school jokes which is kind of also funny it's it's, it's i i yeah. found this part very charming well see that's why it didn't work for me apparently alfalfa still does a bunch of stuff i looked him up and he was in that uh terrible Atlas Shrugged adaptation. Bug Hall? Yeah, maybe. That sounds right. I'm looking him up. Castle? He was in Karaoke Man? Oh, that's that just sounds awesome. Arachnoquake? <laughs> Criminal Minds? Yeah, I mean, he, he still acts. He's like, mm-hmm. not a real actor, but he's a TV actor. It's mostly TV shows. He was in the OC one episode. <laughs> Uncredited as Robert... He did grow up very handsome. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, you know, Christina. The, no, you're I mean, married. No, the one that looks good is the one who played uh, Waldo Blake or er, Ewing. Oh um, yeah, he looks good. Which one was Waldo? He was the uh, the handsome guy who was trying to steal the lower. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Trump's kid yeah. in the movie. The love triangle. Of right, Alpha. right, right. Where um, he was the Richie Rich Macaulay Culkin. He he hasn't done much acting acting. He's done a lot of voice work. It looks like uh, good he was on him. Full House pretty consistently as a kid though. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was no. also in like like Recess. He was in uh, Pinky and the Brain. He was in Timon and Pumbaa. He was in the Tarzan. He was in oh, Hysteria. Wow. He was in Hey Arnold. Oh okay, so he's a good voice actor. No. I mean, he's so well spoken like mm-hmm. for his age. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> looks like my cousin Michael. Uh, anyway, um, so pick it back up, Daniel. Well. That whole fireman scene was uh, something that just didn't work for me because, you know, back in the 30s, the whole novelty behind it was because those kids were actually doing that thing. So for they were actually riding fire hoses, and it actually looked convincing. And this time around, that was the gag. You know, all the kids had to put on fireman outfits, and Spanky had to ride the fire hose. And it just looks so bad. Really? To me, it spoke it to their fine. age. I was just like, yeah, of course, when you're eight and there's a fire, you got to put on a fireman's outfit because that's what you think. That yeah, I, 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 well, I, that, that was the joke about the original shorts. And uh, I, I just don't think it carried over into the 1990s. Can we talk about the ballet scene? Yeah, go I mean, for it. I mean, at this point, it's just a series of nothing. So, <laughs> well, the whole thing about the ballet scene, uh, just so I Which can frame adult it. Adult cameo there too. Oh, Daryl Hannah, yeah. Well, and um, Leah Thompson. Leah Thompson. Yes, yeah. Leah Thompson. She was the ballet teacher. Well, the whole thing is that Alfalfa and Spanky are trying to win um, Darla back f- for Alfalfa, but uh, in order to avoid the bullies, they put on uh, tutus, and uh, Leah Thompson confuses them for. Uh, part of her ballet dancing tropes yeah okay. troops. so there you go so they're running away from bullies they duck into a room uh, after room after room after room um eventually hiding in the closet to uh, the costumes the costume department uh alfalfa has a frog in his pocket because he's bored and something to play with ultimately deciding hey that now he's going to transfer- phrasing are we not doing phrasing anymore i think that's the third time you said this on this episode <laughs> uh it keeps coming up what can i say um the th- he so they're in it. a leotard. Yeah, they transferred to the leotard to go out with the show. Leah Thompson is changing into her tutu. The bullies bust into her room when she's changing, and so she kicks them out. But Buckwheat and Spanky get trapped into doing the show. 
No, it's alfalfa and spanky. Sorry, excuse me, yes. And they ruin it, according to her. They get kicked out as well, but alfalfa is scared of getting warts and freaks out and pulls all of his clothes off. Well, what dance are they doing? It's the sugar plum fairy dance from Nutcracker, right? It's supposed to be, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they're like passing the frog back and forth between them. It's one of the few scenes you see a lot of adults, actually, because, of course, they're Right, right. It's all the adults watching their kids. But they're laughing. They that's exactly what they expected and Leah Thompson took it so seriously. <laughs> it no, great. this is I, you're right. This is this is a good scene. I I I think this set piece is funny and they do a good job and Spanky can't act or can't dance so he just starts <laughs> doing the monkey. Like he just starts <laughs> dancing like a kid and Alfalfa is trying to figure out what's going on and it's utter chaos. And again, like you said, adults don't care. No, they, they don't. Kids. Yeah. And it looks good on the video that they were recording, so there you go. And no one ever watches the videos again. Nope. So the whole point is Leah Thompson has this great conniption fit. She <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Before that, speaking of cameos, we have to talk about the bank. The oh. bank scene. So after the hideaway, the the club is destroyed. They want to get wood to repair it. The wood's going to cost them four hundred dollars. So they decide to Which is to another get a loan. cameo. What, is, yeah, uh, first and foremost, they go cheers. to the lumber yard where they're like going, "We uh, have seventy-five cents worth of change. What wood will that get us?" And uh, it's George Went who runs the lumber yard from Cheers, and uh, he like pulls out this piece of paper. Really? Well, this. <laughs> Wine cork is yeah, like, what it is. It's it's just a shard, and he, he goes here you go, which is paper also, or plastic, which is a joke to your that you probably didn't like, um, but it's it's a joke about the 1930s because like I'm sure that them scraping together six quarters was the entire episode in an old episode, but this is 450 bucks. This is this is 1990s, right? Um, so they have to figure out a way to raise funds. Uh, and that's when they go to a bank to try to take out a loan. Oh, this was a weird bit where they walk by a bank and then uh, it says, like, loans available. And it's like, all in favor of going to this bank say Azuga. And it's like, what the hell is Azuga? I'm sure it's from the show. Every, yeah. th- every good joke, every weird line, every major joke is taken directly from an episode of Our Town. 100%. I guarantee Our gang. It. Our gang, excuse me. <laughs> our Town, our town is, is something. Yeah, our else. Town is something completely different. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Um, and when they go in, they they say no kids, so they do the Vincent they do adult the bit man. from the 1930s yeah. where it's like two kids on top of each right. other in a trench coat to look like an adult, and, and they uh, look very uh, traditional Jewish. Yeah, they have, yeah, they yeah, have yeah, a yeah. 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 beard and they have a flat cap on. Speaking of traditionally Jewish, uh, the bank loan officer that they meet is Mel Brooks, and I think Mel Brooks wrote this scene. Oh, <laughs> it's the best scene in the movie. Well. The you're right. The dialogue is a Mel Brooks dialogue. He's acting like crazy, uh, and this is after his career is gone, so he can do whatever you want. It was right before his career went because the next year was uh, Dracula Dead and Loving It, which was the official end. Wasn't this uh, Life Stinks too? Wasn't that? This was after Life Stinks, uh, so yeah, it's not great. Uh, and then no, no, the I I, I don't back. disagree that he wasn't doing good at the time. <laughs> I it just. His career wasn't quite over, and Let's uh, just say he had, he was set in life and just was yeah. having fun. <laughs> and and he was working on the producers. Right. But he was the producers mm-hmm. were still to come. That's fine. The producers mm-hmm. will save him. Oh, that's great. Great. Yeah, it's a good musical. Mm-hmm. Um, the sh- the movie based on it sucked, but the musical's great. The original <laughs> movie's good. Oh, so, the original movie's good. The musical's good. The m- movie based on the musical's terrible. So Mel Brooks asked them what their bank account number is. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Try eight. eight. <laughs> and it's just, and he like freaks out on them, like, and kind of does the pole beard oh, yeah. gag on them to, to punish them. I will say what made me laugh is right as they're kicked out and they're leaving, um, the next people to come in look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a black guy who has the exact same outfit and a, and a tall white guy and they look they're good. Yeah, they're the same. They hold the door for each other. It's funny. It's it's good. Um, I guess the only other thing we should kind of get into is Darla has met another man. Oh, Waldo. Waldo, who is, the, who is the guy again, like in our gang bit, always is played. He's the rich guy. He's the handsome guy. This He's I think came out the so same good. year that the Richie Rich movie came out in. Yeah. 
So it was pretty much that, that same character. And, I mean, Candace thought it was Macaulay Culkin. And I... He looks like <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. He does. He has the slicked back hair. Yeah. He has everything. It's... Yeah, you're right. It is 94. I but, love that he asked Darla to do a duet with him at the talent show, and he sang the entire time. Yeah. Oh, right? And she just stood there uh, looking, I like, know. smiling in a red, like, sequined dress. It was something. <laughs> what was the song he was singing again? Oh, uh, L. L is for the whatever, the Way Frank Sinatra thing, Love right? Love was made for you and me yeah. or something Yeah, yeah, like that. that was it. Yeah, that's so silly. That... And then Alpha Alpha sang... Oh burping up <laughs> bubbles and well that was a gag from the original shorts was that alpha alpha can't sing but he keeps trying and i mean okay so the, the there are just so many little scenes um at one point alpha alpha after the the ballet he's down to his underwear running around which is goes on a long time oh yeah and then the, there's that gag where he loses his underwear in waldo's swimming pool which yeah. hey Whatever. Kid nudity. That's an appropriate joke. I about that because from the ballet recital, which Darla is at, How did he she get is ahead being of him? chased all over town. And they speed up the scene, which like you know adds to the, the hilarity of it. And then all of a sudden, Darla's in the pool with Waldo already. It's like, how much time passed for Darla to leave? Well, that's the and thing. They <laughs> sped up the scene with Waldo and Darla right. to get to the pool side. And uh, that's how they managed to get there earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, we'll see if that edits out. Um, but yeah, I mean, and so he shows up at the pool naked, and uh, Darla's there drinking like a Mai Tai or something. Oh. <laughs> it, I don't know what she was. Alfalfa. It's a side of you I've never seen, seen or something like that. Yeah, no, that was the line. That was that, the line. I mean, I, I, I kind of laughed at that too. Um, yeah. Oh, of course, we're forgetting the worst bit about Waldo, which is at the end where he's well, about to enter the race. Go ahead. I was going to cut to the race. Oh, okay. Well, the whole thing is uh, the bullies steal the blur, so the little rascals rebuild a, a stock car, and then Waldo's racing in it with Darla. Right before the race begins, Waldo calls his dad. Guess who his dad is? Yeah, that's just funny. It was not funny. It was funny. It was, it was funny. not funny. It's funny. Yeah. I laughed. This was good. Son, you're the best that money can buy, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, 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 it suits him. <laughs> it suits the character Waldo. Like, I, I thought it was perfect. It, it shows yeah. that he's a prick like his dad. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 he, I don't think Don Jr. ever got called the best money could buy. Oh, well, Waldo, <laughs> Waldo already looks like Eric, and Waldo is definitely stupider. No, excuse me. Waldo was definitely stupider than uh, Eric ever was, so there you go. Well, okay, so... Effectively, um, the rascals trick the town. They're going to try to do uh, like a talent. They're, they're going to essentially try to do a freak show to raise money. Oh, this was the one bit that made me chuckle, which is where they're doing the freak show at the carnival. And then they're like, step right up and see the four foot man eating chicken and it's a little kid eating KFC. It was a good dad joke. Um, no one comes to see the show. <laughs> no. And what they're doing is essentially. Uh, who is it? Is it Aha uh-huh and Buckwheat? It, no, it's Porky and Buckwheat. Puck, Porky and Buckwheat just take a sign that says admission $3 and sit outside the talent show, which is free, but people just pay them to see the talent show. Mm-hmm. And they get a like a huge jar filled with money. $500, I think yeah. is what yeah. they said. Um, I did the math on $3 per person. First, you know, yeah. 500 total, and there should be like well over 100 people. If, like, well, lot. I mean, that makes and sense like considering the crowd people in the audience. Oh, yeah, no, they, they, <laughs> no, no, there was more than 20 people, there was at least 30 people. I mean, it, and it's also a very kind of crowded scene joke thing where like every extra who's shown up before is there, yep. and then it, it, it's a way to resolve the movie, right? Mm-hmm. We need them to get the 500 bucks so they can rebuild the the, well, the, the hideaway. Well, first, Daryl Hannah shows up as their like school teacher, and she's like, you gotta give that money back, and they're like, I got a better idea. How's about we put it up as the uh, prize for the stock car, and she's like, okay, I like it. That's uh, Mrs. Crabtree, who is actually the character who is their teacher in the show. Wait, wait, Mrs. Crabtree? Is that's Daryl Hannah. Well, I knew that was Daryl Hannah, but I just didn't know the character's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's that's who she is. Whatever. So after we have the two musical numbers, which is funny, uh, we end up with the stock car race, which is the yep, which is the third act, which mm-hmm. is essentially what it is. I uh, did like Waldo and Darla's car referencing Speed Racer because it's like okay. 
they're willing to admit something happened in the world after 1939. Well, and it, it's like this rocket car. Like, this yeah. is a bit that the Simpsons did to, like, every, whatever. I kind of wanted to build a stock car. <laughs> yeah. A, a box car. Like, a I soapbox was on Boy racer. Scouts back in the day, and I had to do those. Uh, the give Pine us, Derby? The yeah, pine. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did those, too. I just... That always seemed like fun to me. So <laughs> me whatever. too. Do you think they stole from a random washing machine to build their stock car? Oh, I like to think so. Yeah, so not like their own well, parents' house. That, that was but the like whole some thing where they house. like show up in the washing machine. They like deliberately overload it or something, right? No, they just tear the panel off and it starts to foam. Like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. And it's funny. I I, I dig it. Um, <laughs> I, I do like the the thing about this movie, which I thought was very charming is it's all little kid lo- logic and it always works yeah. right because the idea is that they all have like turbo jets on their like stock car their little <laughs> whatever mm-hmm. and they all work like they turn right. on the spin cycle and it shoots them down the road they have literal rockets on the little kid sh- like car and it just shoots backwards it's it's kind of great i agree with that yeah no <laughs> I mean, and the, I mean, it's fine, but it's so based in like 1930s mentality for kids. I mean, why isn't it like the wizard where they have to get like the high score on a video game or something? Got him out of the house. That would have made more sense for what was happening at the time. I, I, I'm fine with this. I, I will say I wish there was something that held the movie together more. There's just nothing that holds it there. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're, we're kind of at the end. Uh, of course, our gang wins the race by Buckwheat's hair. Oh, oh no, Alfalfa's hair. I keep wanting to say Buckwheat. Uh, buckwheat. But buckwheat was the best part. In, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He was good. Um, all, What's like, the number for 911? They give How up. do I know? <laughs> well, and that one has another tag because they're just across the street from the fire station. Right, right, exactly. right. Um, or the pickle. Oh, and you thought that was Leslie Nielsen, right? Yeah, in line? I looked again. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was. No, I. I I wouldn't have put it past them, and that would have been awesome, but... Uh, but I love them in the love note. Like, dear uh, Darla. Oh, yeah. I Darla. hate your stinking gut. I hate your... Because <laughs> Porky blew his nose on the... So, oh, Alfalfa, no. they, he knew they couldn't read, and so he pretended to, to write a hate note to her, but wrote, like, a really nice love note to her and asked them to deliver it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Porky ended up blowing his nose all over okay question <laughs> how old are these kids they're supposed to be like four yeah the, the, but yeah. how does that make sense because they talk about the blur which is like five years before I them mean, the he-man woman haters club needs young blood yeah they, they, they like mentioned that it's been around <laughs> you know they they recruit from well the that, younger. that was such a weird thing about this movie was Very because different. they never clarified that i mean the kids act like they're five but they're supposed to be i think around 10 based on yeah i think the so. history behind the he-man woman haters club i think you're just yeah. being i bet i bet buckwheat and porky were just someone's little brother in the club Okay, that would make sense, but <laughs> yeah. it would have been great if they clarified that. And Nick, I acknowledge that I'm just I being think that's that the way. But the beauty of hey. this movie is that there's no clarification oh, no. needed. I mean, and this is this is like, kind of how the shorts were. Like, there's yeah. no rhyme or reason to anything. They just needed a thing to go. And I mean, to that end, I don't think this was great. But there were bits that. Le- okay, so for example, the very we're introduced to Buckwheat and Porky because they're sw- they're fishing, and their hooks get caught underneath the dog. Mm-hmm. And as one pulls, it pulls the other one into the water, and so they just teeter totter back and forth. Oh, the smooth criminal bit. Yeah, and then Petey <laughs> just tries to help. I think it's Buckwheat, mm-hmm. and pulls his butt back, and then it pulls Porky completely into the water. That See, was great. That bit, I think, as a standalone, was fine. But then they followed up by reading the note, and it's like we got to learn how to read. It's like, how old are you supposed to be? And why are you fishing? It's 1994. But that came, that yeah. set you up for the love letter scene. Yeah, because it, you did. You wouldn't have no <laughs> Chekhov's, Chekhov's love letter. Disability. Jesus, Chekhov's learning disability. There you go. Oh God. Um. So what I would say is, this would have worked better as a series of shorts than a movie. Yeah. Um, it it would have worked, like I said, if they clarified the time period that it was taking place in, or made it a fantasy movie. I like the ambiguity of it. Like no. it's just like a kid's like summer adventure in my mind we can wrap it up uh so give me your final thoughts christina oh i guess i started yeah, no, 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 please. <laughs> yeah i i mean i liked it 
I mean, I knew the whole movie by heart. I still know the whole movie by heart. Like, it was just something... When you watch something that many times as a kid, it it stays. And <laughs> I still enjoyed it, like, when I watched it as an adult. But a lot of times I'd be like, huh, Alfalfa has to guard the blur. Why don't they just put it in the garage where their parents live? <laughs> like, you know, there was a lot more of, like, <laughs> that kind of, like, why don't they just ask an adult for help here? <laughs> Oh yeah, but, no, that, that's, yeah. That, that's definitely part of it. Like, yeah. they should have asked uh, adults for... But no one's around. Like, right. that's the thing that... Whatever. Go ahead. And I think that's part of it. It's just like, they don't think they could ask adults for help. So they, they try to do it on their own. And then, as you have stated, kid logic ensues. And it works out for them in the yeah, end. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Before I get into my final thoughts, I'd like to... Uh, go over the final bit of the movie which is uh, Darla helps the little rascals win because the bullies throw like a flare or a firecracker into their car or something Yeah. so they invite women to join the He-Man Woman Haters oh, Club yeah. Well, yeah, and yeah. also Reba McIntyre makes a cameo oh, as AJ like the Johnson? best race car driver in the world and they just didn't realize yeah yeah that it was a yeah, woman yeah it was a woman so in my mind I was like yeah, feminism. People can get along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, no, it was, that's can sweet do, ending. That yeah. was an effective cameo. And uh, with, what's his name? Uh, who, who's the one who's obsessed with her? Spanky? Spanky. 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 And she's like, you know, give me a kiss on the other cheek. It was very cute. It was a <laughs> yeah, cute that scene. was cute. Politician. <laughs> yeah. In terms of my wrap up, I don't know. I mean, I had remembered this movie. I had liked it as a kid. It works as like a series of shorts, but it just doesn't work as like a feature film. It would have been a lot better as like a TV show on Nickelodeon or something. But I don't know. Uh, the kids are fine, but at the same time, Penelope Spheris had already done this movie, and it was called The Decline of Western Civilization, which is about teenagers going against the trend. But that was just so dark and... The 1930s slapstick just doesn't work for a 1990s audience. It was weird. All right. Well, my thought on this all is, I mean, Daniel, I mean, you're right. It was got a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was a bomb. Mm-hmm. It, it did make more money than Wayne's World 2. So oh, it did? Significantly. <laughs> Wayne's World. How did it do compared to the Beverly Hillbillies? You know, I didn't look. I should. Uh, no, no. There's, there's no reason to look. Oh, I mean, <laughs> we've got time. All right. Um, <laughs> but, like, I... I, I'm kind of in between you two. Um, I honestly cringed at a lot of it because I I knew what they were going to do. It just didn't work out. Um, I thought most of it was pretty funny and pretty charming. Um, I thought some of the bits were better. I agree with you, Daniel, though. Um, I think it, sh- it worked would have worked better as a series of shorts or something because nothing held if the tim burton together. had directed this movie as like an edward scissor hands every time sort of movie it would have been so much better it did better than beverly hills billies by about 13 million dollars oh good for you kids and animals well i mean <laughs> i would guess that these movies cost nothing to make either right well yeah i mean um that was kind of penelope uh serious thing in the 90s was like uh TV adaptations after Wayne's World. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we are just about out of time. I I don't even know what to tell you. H- here's the thing. It's on Netflix right now. It's been on for a year, so I don't think it's going anytime soon. <laughs> Give it a shot. You'll know whether or not you're into this after the first 20 minutes. I think by the first 20 minutes, the firehouse scene is done. Yeah. Um, and it's just more of that. So you're either going to find it charming or you're not. This one is one that... I feel like there's no investment into. You might as well try it if you're interested at all. <laughs> Look up the Mel Brooks scene on YouTube. Watch that. That's all you need to see. It's 25 minutes in. You can find it. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, um, so tune in next week and every future week when we put another piece of your past on trial. Thanks. My Opie Defend Your Childhood is hosted you by Nick Hoffman, so edited beautiful. by Candace Burns, and executive produced by Sweet Nick Hoffman and Candace Burns. It is produced Can't by Daniel Suttis, Matthew Quinn, and Thomas Herman. We are a proud member of the ESO Network and a product of Good Butter Podcasting. Our theme is Surf Shimmy by Kevin McLeod. Find it at incomptech.com. It is licensed you under Creative Commons so Attribution Rewrites. And thanks. 
This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.